that you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on this. Bonus hour. Bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS. Is the phone? Is everything okay? Yeah. Hello? Wendy? Yes? It's Michael from Asbury Park. How you doing? Hi, Michael. Nice to speak with you. I got some scoop for you. Okay. That song, that Mariah Carey song? Yes. A friend of mine does music. He's from Edison, and he does, he does music, and he just got signed. He's going to have Fat Joe on his next song, and he wrote a song called Spanish Guitar, and I liked it. I listened to it. It was good, and I heard the new Mariah Carey song on the radio with him, and he played me Spanish Guitar. It's the same song. Great minds think alike. I guess he was at a, he was at a lawyer today in New York, and they were talking about you know doing oh. whatever they got to do. Uh-oh. Yeah, I was. I said no way, and then he let me listen to it. And he played them right next to each other. It's the same song. Wow. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll be following that story. Thank you for that. All right, babe. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye bye. And shout out to everybody in Asbury Park, New Jersey. The O seven seven one two eight twenty one Central Avenue seven seven four five nine seven three. I even remember all that original information. We moved from there when I was five, but that was our address and that was our telephone number. My kid knows his telephone number. I'm scared to teach him 911. You know how kids are. As soon as you say you're going to crack their skull, they run to the phone and dial Hello? 911. Hello? Oh, goodness. Hi, Wendy. Hey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's nice to have you here. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and I get through on the day that you decide to do the extra hour. Yeah, the bonus <laughs> hour. So what's going on? Oh, what's your name? What are you calling about? I'm Tisha. Um, I was calling to ask you, what do you think about your girl Tasha Jones on uh, that other station? The trouble that she's in. It is what it is. I got my own fish to fry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Wendy? Yes. Hi, baby. Hey, How you hi. doing? This is Sonia from Cypress. I'm sorry. Hi, Sonia. Listen, I was trying to call you yesterday. I missed your um, show on VH1. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering why they're not showing it like they've shown this stupid it's the real life. I'm getting tired of this. I mean, you know what? The show um, launches uh, for the original, you know, whatever date I tell you it comes on. Then it plays for like yeah. two weeks afterwards. And then they take it out of circulation. But I do have a red carpet special coming on in February the exact date, I'm not exactly sure. Hey, Art, pull up the VH1 website. Maybe the Wendy Williams is on fire, red carpet on fire special or something like that. And then that'll have an original launch date and then that'll probably run for two weeks and that'll be done too. That is perfect. And listen, as I was trying to um, talk to you yesterday, Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, surfing through the TV, right? And this thing called Bold and Dash comes on. And guess who's sitting up there? Who? It was um, Paul Mooney. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I love him, but I ain't lying. He looked like you were Britney in the King and I. <laughs> <laughs> he had on this red, you know that, that you were Britney thing he had they, in the King and I? They they both have that bald thing. No, but he had on that, that uniform thing, too, though. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't yeah, see what girl, he was. It was red. It was nice, though. But I was like, oh, my God, I think he's going to be saying Kaka Boom or something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, check out Paul in his wardrobe. I love him, though. It, that's I love right. Him. Weekend I love mornings you too. right here on WBLS. Sonia, thank you so I much. I love for you calling. so much. All right. Um, hello? Hi, Wendy. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing well. I am so excited that you are on for the next hour. You have no idea. Because I get out of work at 5. By the time I get to my car and get everything situated, yeah. it's time for you to go. Yeah. So I am so happy. I love being here. I'm glad. That's your, you know, it's people like you that I'm here for. Because wow. I know how, I used to be sitting in the traffic saying, damn, I wish I had something decent to listen to. How exactly. can I make it so that the traffic gets cut down and, 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 and I'm still happy? And I said, let me just stay. By the time I get out of here, the, the Lincoln Tunnel's clear. Everybody who's exactly. commuting right now, you've got a little eargasm going on with the experience. I exactly. I hope this lasts. I have a, actually a comment. I'm actually pretty late on this comment, but I just wanted to tell you anyway. Um, I know that you had said something about Jennifer Lopez, and then you said, well, it actually makes sense for her to be with Mark Anthony now because it's comfortable, and that her mother probably enjoys that because, you know, he's you know he's Hispanic. Right. And me being Hispanic, I really disagree with that comment because your parents kind of look at you like they want you to be with like this Gringo. That's what we call them, like blonde hair, blue eyes doctor. All right, you know what your, I mean? your like parents want assimilation. Exactly. So her mother, 
I mean, to this day, I believe that, you know, she's still in love with Ben and her mother really liked Ben. I don't think the whole Mark Anthony's working. And I watched Cristina with his wife and, I mean, there's a lot of drama going on. So, mm. I don't think that she's in love with, with Mark Anthony. No, no way. Saying, He's a little man. They're saying now that, um, you know, his, his controlling nature is, is really getting, starting to get the best of the relationship. Mm-hmm. And he is cheap as hell. She's not going to settle for that. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, well, you know, we'll all be wow. watching. I love her. Wow. Exactly. Me too. I can't hate, you know? I yeah. can only talk. <laughs> all right. Take care. Yeah. How does everything just get cut off and nobody knows anything? <clears throat> is everything okay there in the producer's corner? No, no, no. That's not him. That's my fault. Mm, yeah, but I, uh, I know. Well, that's I know. That's my fault. No, it's my fault. <laughs> no, no, because I'm always watching it per second. It's my fault. It's, it's my fault. She called us Moe's, yeah. It's okay. A mo is a mo. A mo is a mo. Art was telling a story earlier about the toe action. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to hear it another time. Dear Wendy, I believe the issue with SpongeBob is not him being a homosexual, but Patrick the starfish. <laughs> oh, you know what? You got something there. Listen to what she says. Erica, this is. Erica says, in the latest SpongeBob movie... Patrick is dancing around in fishnet stockings. My eight-year-old son brought it to my attention, and he came running in my room laughing and shouting, Ma, look at Patrick, the starfish. He's gay. Is he gay? How you doing? I still love SpongeBob, but sometimes I don't know about this mess they put on TV. Exactly. Patrick does have tendencies, doesn't he? I remember, I remember him with his fishnets in the SpongeBob movie. We all went, to, the three of us went to see it, and I'm looking with the queer eye. I'm not saying anything, but I'm just like, okay. <clears throat> and this is about that woman yesterday who, um, whose um, black son is being accused of raping the white girlfriend. Well, this is from a greasy listener in California who says, Wendy, regarding the mother whose son is being wrongfully accused of rape, I recommend that he set the hoe up. If the two are still communicating via email, phone, and personal contact, then conversation emails and stuff need to be recorded. Somehow he needs to get the hoe to admit that she was not raped, but it was sexual consent. The parents should have their son wire wire, and secretly arrange for the two of them to meet. Record every word, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> not a bad idea. I don't know that wiretaps are admissible in court, but you know what? Not a bad idea. Oprah, everybody, is going to be on Desperate Housewives. It's already filmed in the can and ready to roll out. Let me just take one quick second to address this fax here and then I wanted to talk um, about something else. This is so this is so obvious to me. Or maybe it's just me. I can't figure it out for the life of me. Why anybody would even go down this road of thought. But she only means well. It reads as follows. Wendy Quick question. My husband and I, excuse me, my husband had a son who died suddenly at the age of three. This was almost 10 years ago and before I came into his life. Wendy, I'm planning our pregnancy. Isn't that, she's so cute. I'm planning our pregnancy. So cute. And I'm lost on what to name the baby if it's a boy. Do you think it's disrespectful? To his deceased son's memory to name another son, Junior. I keep getting mixed advice. So since you're a friend in my head, I thought I'd ask you. I'm 28, he's 33, and we've been married for two years. I have two other children, not his. He has three, also not mine. There's no room for a junior in this. A three-year-old is not just a memory. A three-year-old was a living, breathing person with a personality. There is no room for junior. I can't even believe she's getting mixed messages. Well, wait a minute. I'm in the room right now with eight people. I say no. Who's with me? Raise your hand. Unanimous no on everybody's account. Who are you friends with that you're getting mixed messages on this? People... If you happen to be near a fax machine, I would love to hear what you have to say about this. At 866-GET-WENDY, a three... Hell, not even... Hell no! Shifting gears for a moment. Did you hear about the 33-year-old... At least 
stories are popping up every place. This one happens to be in Redwood City. Where is that? Somewhere out in California? That's out in California? A 33-year-old elementary school teacher was put in jail this week after the DNA test proved that her 16-year-old former student fathered her infant son. These stories are popping up left and right. It's just that you think, like, what does a 33-year-old woman see in a 16-year-old boy? Wow. Other than quick flattery as you walk past and he peels your clothes off with his nasty little juvenile eyes. You know what I mean? Just some quick flattery to make you say, oh, yeah. Miss Susie still got it. And you take a little dip in your knee bend action, like you know, a little drop like it's hot, and then you keep walking. You don't even turn around to see if he's looking at your walk away. He's six damn teen. <laughs> DNA tests confirmed that the baby born last June to former Roy Cloud Elementary School teacher Rebecca Ann Buscelli. How come no sisters get caught up in stuff like this? You never hear about a sister, okay. you know, and that's a good thing. I was just asking out loud and exhaling with the rest of the folk listening because you know how we are about stories and the headlines. All we want to hear is one thing. It's not folk. Please don't. Let it be. Please don't let it be folk. Anyway, the baby was fathered by a boy who's now 18 years old. And according to the test, there is a. 22.1 million to one probability that he's the father. In other words, that boy's the father. Rebecca, who's from Menlo Park, New Jersey. It, maybe this is Menlo Park, California. I only know one Menlo Park. I'm so. St- that, that's New Jersey? Yeah, that's where the, the New Jersey transit stops. Oh, hell, let me just continue on. <clears throat> where am I? On the page. I'm so in bifocal denial. You know what I mean? The girl, the woman, Rebecca, was arrested on Thursday on three charges of lewd and lascivious acts with a minor and statutory rape. She is now being held on $500,000 bail. Now, the cops investigating say that Rebecca, um, back in March, started sending up flares when another teacher called the authorities about odd behavior between a teacher and a young Student. Well, the search warrant was filed July 16th, and the boy said that their relationship, excuse me, who is this? Oh, and spe- there's speculation their relationship might have uh, begun even earlier than July 16th. The, teachers w- the teacher was uncooperative, as was the other half in this case, in other words, the boy. So they were at the mercy of DNA tests. And the authorities say we have people who've seen them together holding hands and things of that nature as far back as 2002. So not only was it like a hit and run, it wasn't even a hit and run. She was luxuriating. Wow. Holding wow. hands. Wow. Wow. Oh. <laughs> For him, of course, it's all exciting. You remember what it's like to be 16, boys. <laughs> She's been his teacher. She had been his teacher for a while while he was at the middle school. We're not we're still not sure how they ended up renewing their relationship. A lot of people were very concerned and had a lot of suspicions about what was going on. The DNA test certainly confirmed those suspicions. Among those suspicious was a Roy Cloud Elementary School custodian. The janitors always know. You know, <laughs> they got that mop. That mop allows them entree everywhere. Everywhere. And the the janitor told the detectives that Rebecca and the boy were often there late in the evening and that she once walked into a darkened classroom to find them, or excuse me, he once walked into a darkened classroom to find them standing there. The custodian's sister, who, who lives in the same complex as the jump off boy, said that Rebecca often hung around the complex and she saw the couple hugging and kissing inside a pickup truck. Why can't he just mop his floors? (laughs) And mind his own damn business. Why couldn't she pick somebody more appropriate? And if she's going to get sick for a minute, why does she have to luxuriate in it? Driving back and forth and holding hands and getting all caught up. 
I'll tell you why. The nature of a woman is soft and pink. We don't have the ability to just hit the skins and scram. But for so long, it might have started out that way. You know, she just showed him a little pink meat and went on about her business. And then she turned soft and pink. Next thing you know, she's trying to hold hands. Even the boy probably didn't want it. Hell, old lady, I'm not trying to get <laughs> locked down. Although in Desperate Housewives, that boy's in love. She needs to quickly grab her knee pads and get to the father as fast as possible. And just, just, because the mother, like most mothers, is going full steam ahead. Doesn't want to, especially because the jump off the, the, the on Desperate Housewives, the jump off woman on Wisteria Lane looks better than the boy's mom. And the father's hot for the jump off too. Mm, yeah. Anyway, it's a sick world out there and uh, and getting sicker. I'm here to monitor things as best I can without adding to it in my situations. Um, we had a woman who faxed in earlier and um, well, here's the fax. She says, Dear Wendy, the mothers are having a discussion and we would like your opinion. Don't you love that? Apparently, you know, this woman and her friends who are all mothers and stuff. We all listen to your show and you talk about your daily schedule, but you choose not to talk about the activities that you do with little Kev or is he not in your schedule too often? Oh, just smack me with the working woman stick. Damn you. She goes on to say, and we have some questions for you. What makes a mother a good mother? Jeez, like I know. Can a woman be successful at her career and still be a good mother? Jeez. How much meaningful time do you spend with your child a week? And how much time is not enough? Jeez. Tell you what, this bonus hour cuts into my time right here. But I've worked around it. I slide in the door at 8 o'clock at night. And I might still have on my outfit of choice for the day. Now, there, there was a time I'd get in an hour earlier. But I'd be frustrated because I was fighting traffic and stuff. But I'd still be able to, like, slide off my Uggs and my jeans and, you know, my shirt and stuff. And put on my robe. And then, you know, take a moment for myself. And then go into his room or, you know, have him, in, you know, or, you know, like, join him. Send Lopez home. And we spend time together. Bye. Now... I don't have time to sl I'm literally curled up on his bed with my Uggs still on, but dangling over the edge. You know, I still am folk. We don't do that. Right? <laughs> right? Church, holla. <laughs> Kissing the dog all up in the damn mouth. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's you and you. That's your wife and her people. Yeah, she takes the cat and she lick him in the mouth. <laughs> Try to kiss you. Welcome home, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, as far as the nighttime, we still have it because he goes to bed um, shortly after I come in. I'm more diligent about stories than I was before. Ironically enough, my evening time is cut shorter, so I'm more diligent about story time. You know, and or conversation about the day because it's not always about a story. You know, sometimes, you know, how was your day and, you know, so on and so forth. Like, like real stuff. Um, in the mornings, I, I wake up early and I take him to school 90% um, of the time. And um, our conversation from the time I wake him up about hygiene, you know, the teeth, about in, whatever, um, it's always me and him. Riding in the car, majority of the time we're riding in silence. You know, I am in radio, but, you know, I got to spend that time with my kid. We don't really listen to what's going on in the mornings. You know, respect P PM and the AM. But, you know, I got to tell you something. My kid this morning says, the S-U-N is very bright, mommy. I was like, oh, my gosh. And he's still learning. Thank God. The S-U-N, like he spelled. Son, he knew what he was spelling. He says, you know, it's very bright, mommy. And I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, I, hold on, hold on. You know, do I spend enough time? I don't know. You know what? Can a woman have it all? Not in my opinion. You know, they're they're. You know, you got to. You know, we're always straddling the fence, and that hurts your crotch. You know, you got to choose a side. Oh God! I 
mean, we do spend time together, but some of that, but a lot of the activities that we do are very private between us. You know what I mean? He takes swim lessons now, and I take him there and cheer him on and whatnot. You know, I'm not at liberty to say where, when, what time, and all like that. But we do we do tons of stuff together. You know, we have been known to go to the the Museum of Natural History. You know, just walk through on a weekday. You know, like that. We go out for lunch. Just you know, we do stuff together. Do I spend enough time? I don't know. Mama! You know, it'll uh, it'll all come out in the wash. You know, is he an axe murderer? Is he a judge? You know, is he, you know a ball player or a rapper? <laughs> 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 you know, uh, I, I don't know. It's a constant war in my head, and I can't answer the question: What makes a good mother? I'm only four years deep, and even women who are you know forty years deep, you know. I'm still, I, I have criticisms for my mother. Don't think, don't think you're the best mother. You know what I mean? If, if you were, you know, I wouldn't have these implants that you're staring at through my t-shirt because I'm getting ready to go out and host a party in my career that I had no support about until I started getting a little paper. And you could start seeing real results. I mean, you know what I mean? So what makes a good mother? I don't know. I don't know. You know, we try our best. Does that make sense? I love my mom. I love my dad. But what makes them the best parents? I mean, what makes any, you know, who knows? Who knows? Oh, lordy, 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 lordy. What phone was that? Was that, uh, was that, uh, anybody just calling in here? Is that important? No. All right. Look, let's, uh, take a break. There's people on hold who want to talk. So I say, well, we forgo a song. But if we were going to play a song, what would it have been? Pitch Black. <sighs> I like that Pitch Black song. <sighs> Another damn war in my head. <laughs> All right, look, everybody. Uh, Vaughn Harper's coming up at 7 o'clock with The Quiet Storm. we got still, you know, a little bit more time left. It's, it is what it is. Um, we are today's R&B. Classic Soul. And the Wendy Williams Experience. We're 107.5 WBLS. Wendy Williams. You know, the way she dresses, she's a businesswoman. She's very intelligent. But, I mean, are people going to take her seriously? The Wendy Williams Experience. Wendy's got the heat. Wendy's got the heat. 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 Hey, what's up? This is China Dow General Hour, and you're listening to Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. Hey! Damn. Sorry, did that all come on over the air? Oh, well, it is what it is. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Wendy, it is not the quantity of time that you spend with your child, it is the quality of time. Yeah, we spend good quality time together, but there's something in there about that quantity, too. You know what I mean? You can just, it, it's got, yeah, you got to have like a balance of both. So I agree, but I disagree. You know, it's got to be a nice balance. Um, dear Wendy, please tell us more about the stitch on your coochie. Yeah. <laughs> I usually squeeze my kegel muscles during sex, but I'm considering stitching. My husband says my coochie is not loose, but I think he is just saying that so he won't feel hurt my feelings. No, I'm talking about, you know, when you deliver a baby and you rip your taint. Did you rip your taint? I ripped my taint. I told the doctor before, if I rip my taint, you know, you fix it good and give me one more for good measure. You know, fix it regular, you know, and then give me one more for good measure. <clears throat> That's all. I mean, I wouldn't be down there doing work if I didn't have a baby that pushed out of there. You know, oh yeah, he messed me up. I was sitting in the sieve bath for... Seem like a month of Sundays. <laughs> Taking care of the area. Dear Wendy, concerning whether to name a child junior, I say no. Friends of mine had a child who died shortly after birth named the third. And they had another child the next year and gave that child the same name. However, I have to agree that a three-year-old is a different story altogether. Unless, of course, he's an egomaniac like George Foreman who names all his boys George. Yeah, yeah. Dear Wendy, what the hell? <laughs> I love when stuff starts like that. 
You all get as angry and passionate as me. I love that. Dear Wendy, what the hell? My wife has to work late hours at her new job, and she gets in at either 6 or 8 p.m. also. Do you take your child to school? Do you spend time on the weekends? If so, you are a good parent. F the wannabe perfect parents who probably have the deep hate for their own kids so they have to fax you and to bring you down. I'm a working father and I'm home with my child. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just I, I'm not going through that war anymore. And I have to say that's where my big sister, my big conservative sister, who, you know, in the beginning of life, we had so little in common because she was the good son and I'm, you know, the bad seed. Child rearing has just brought it all around and back home. Oh, she's the one who teaches me all the shortcuts and 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 pats me on the back like Wendy. You know, it's tough. It's real in the field. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you got your weekend time. You got your time before school. Grab that time and hold on to it like a vice grip. You know, you know, you got your. You know, you do plenty. You know, you're go, go, Wendy, go. And I'm like, thank you, Wanda. Often our conversations end in tears because I collapse like the little sister asking her something, you know, you know, can you please help me? I need some guidance. You know, not that sensible guidance that your parents give you all judgmental and stuff, but you know, I need, you know, real woman practical advice for the working mother, Wanda, you know. And so she gives me advice. But thank you. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna say all, F all the parents who, you know, but, but you know, parenting is different for everybody. That's all. We spent all weekend together until the until the the um, the devil hour midnight because that's when I got to change into my sequins and beads and drop it like it's hot at some club. You know what I mean with the brown juice and the champagne. And if it's a real good night, that's me earling outside outside of the passenger door. You know, going through the Lincoln Tunnel. We just blazed through the Easy Pass lane. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? The kid is home sound asleep, not knowing any different. Somehow when I get in at 5 o'clock in the morning, I still manage to stagger into his room, wake him up before he wets the bed. You know, you still got to, you know, stagger in there, smelling like all kind of chief and party excrement. and You know, you know what I'm saying? Not wanting to kiss him goodnight because at 4 o'clock in the morning, these are the devil's lips. <laughs> you know, I already kissed you before I left. You just go to the bathroom and go back. But he acts like the devil child. Do you wake your kids up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom? What? Oh, my gosh. The temper. Crazy. He can't just get up and just go to the bathroom. It's got to be a whole dramatic effect. Mama! Get off. And when I say I love you, he says, I love you too, but I'm mad at you. And carries on. Anyway, hello. Hey, Wendy, how you doing? Hi, how are you, sir? I'm fine. Listen, that woman should absolutely not name her child a second junior. Yeah. She should not. Now, like you said, that's, that child was a three-year-old living, breathing child. She should start brand new. Don't bring any more pain to that father like like he, like from the beginning, like he from, when yeah. he lost his son. Yeah. I don't, got don't. you. Thank you very much for calling. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you. I love listening to your show, but you just pisses me off today, Wendy. What did I do? I'll take it. You were were very, very distasteful about the 50 Cent situation. I, wow. I totally didn't like wow. it at all, how you wow. made it sound. You mean what he was going to do with the plastic hand? Yes. <laughs> You're not even sure if he's going to have a plastic hand. Well, uh, you know, perhaps I was able to go there because I didn't believe this story from the jump. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know what you mean, girl. But as long as we're going to talk about a plastic hand, that's a real situation for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I know. But hey, not don't, don't just rub it in. It just happened. You should have waited a little. No, oh, no. We don't wait for anything. We told you. I think so. Story but yesterday. 50 is my dog. I'm a Queens girl, and I love 50 to them. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm Just sorry. I go way back. I'm sorry. I hit home for you. I'm sorry about that. But I thank you for listening to the show. Okay, Wendy. All right. Bye bye. All right. And the good news is, is that none of us believe that 50 has a plastic hand. We all believe that uh, this is uh, one of those urban legends. I like it. As urban legends go, this is a good one. This is a really damn good one. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Wendy. Yes. Hi. Am I on the radio? Sure, you are. Get the f out. 
You see, you why know, would you? Why you, with all? You know, just, that, that, that's what I wanted to call. I wanted to ask you, what's really going on with 50 Cent? I mean, is, is it a rumor? Okay, we just talked about that. Uh, yeah, I, I believe that that is a, a, a rumor. It is a rumor? Oh, all right. Yes. I, I was scared. Have a nice <laughs> f***ing night. Mm. Bye. Hi. Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hey. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Listen, um, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. There's a song that you used to always play on Fridays, the Drink On song. Yes, the Drink On song. Yeah, well, who made that song? Because I've been trying to look for that, but I don't know who... Who Byron Stingley, Maestro, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Byron Stingley, and thank you for calling. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy, how you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm great. Okay, I have a question, okay? okay. Now, there is this guy that I am so interested in, okay? But let me not forget to tell you, I am involved. I've been involved for seven years with the man. I'm very much in love but there's this guy, and he's just constantly, constantly on my mind. Wow. And what's so strange about it is that all I can think of is me and him, you know, doing a nasty wow. all the time. I wow. mean, from the morning, I, from the time I wake up wow. in the morning to yeah. the time I lay down at night. Yeah. Oh, this is all I think about. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. does that make me what they call a closet hoe? No, it makes you a human. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a little tasty treat you'd like to sample. However, you know better, right? Right. Right. How old are you? I'm 28. And this man that you've been involved with for seven years, are you guys, do you guys have children together? No, we don't. We don't. Are you in love? I am. I love him so much. You aren't about to ask me what you should do, are you? Yes. No. <laughs> I really, I really want to know because you know, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not one for cheating. Okay, I, I'm not. I'm totally against the cheating thing. No, but no, what you're totally against is getting caught. <laughs> you know, I mean, read, read through my response uh, to find an answer to your question. Okay. Okay. Now, now, let me ask you one more question about uh, the, the the potential jump off. How do you know him? Well, see, it's just a phone thing. I, I actually um, haven't met him face to face yet. Are you talking about art? Huh? Are you talking about art? <laughs> no. Okay. No. How, what, what, how, what do you mean a phone thing? How do you talk to him? Okay, well, we speak every day. I actually can't tell you exactly without... You know, just in case my, 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 my boyfriend is listening. Right. Through your line of work, you speak every day. Right. Well, you know what? If you don't know him and he's not in your circles, I kick that where back there. Where? Okay. Back there. Yeah, yeah, you really do need to. I thought you were going to say this is somebody that you know, but you actually have to go out of your way to actually meet this guy. It, look, it's not worth it. Or do you intend on marrying? Well, well, he, you know, I asked him because he sends me signals as if, you know. He sends you signals through a phone. That's nothing. Do you intend on marrying your seven year man? No, not at all. Well, then, why are we even talking about this? Why, why are you still with him? I just, I can't let him go. I don't know how to tell him to leave. Okay, well, before you even think about the next person, maybe you need to get a backbone and figure out how to deal with the situation you're in. Wow, yeah. girl, I thought for sure you were going to say that you were in love and that you are going to get married at some point, you know, in the future. You're a mess. Get a backbone. Okay, I am in love, though. I am in love, without a doubt. Then why do you want to break up with him because you can't get him to leave? Well, I don't understand you. Okay, well, let's, let's just be real. Men do it to us women every day, okay? The, we don't know what they're doing when they're I understand. Gone. That's why I said it's not the, the cheating that you're into. It's the getting caught that you're into. Read through my response, and there and lies the answer that I'm giving you. Okay. But I just don't feel comfortable saying it. <laughs> okay. Have a nice night. <laughs> you too, Wendy. Oh, yeah. And um, that, that I was able to get a quick response on that call as she was speaking. Uh, this person says, ask her, does she pleasure herself over this guy? Well, I'm sure she does. Wow. Duh. Wow. And on the same facts, it says, what happened to make you get the stitch? Nothing. I just heard that once you pass a bowling ball through the area that, you know, it's just urban legend. <laughs> that, you know, everything just is wide open and stuff. So I said, well, you know, make me normal and then give me one for good. You know, just make everything normal because, you know, the taint, the boy has a big head. You know, as I say, make me normal. And then just one for good measure. One is like a, 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 and a big mouth. I mean, you know, that's it. There's no, there's no complaints. No, you know, 
My urine wasn't just escaping on me. And I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? There was, there was, no. Anyway, you guys, Lauren Hill, uh, in one of the stories that people have been talking about today, very briefly to none at all, uh, is that Kanye West is uh, going to collaborate with Lauren Hill on her second solo CD. And Ian in Brooklyn says, a good parent is one that acknowledges their child and praises their achievements and encourages them to be good people. Thank you, Ian. I have one more thing to read. I really want to read this before I go. Is that okay? All right. Dear Wendy, I have a situation. I have a friend. She's actually one of the situations. She's 36. She has two kids. Somehow I think that this is the woman, but she's trying to push it off on a fictitious friend. Okay, we'll go with this. She's 36. She has two kids. And she's been with her kid's father since they were 16. They never broke up. Nothing ever serious happened. No problems. Until about six months ago, when? One day, we were all outside on my steps watching the kids play and have fun. And we see my friend's boyfriend, Marcus, walk up with some little kid. As they got closer, we realized that this little boy looks just like Marcus. So I said out of curiosity, I didn't know your daughter had a son. Marcus says, this is not my daughter's baby. It's mine. Well, my friend who I'm writing you about, his name is Tamika. Tamika got up and slapped the ish out of Marcus and walked into the house and came out with his stuff. She asked him when did it happen, and he said three years ago, which means his son is three, and he said he was sleeping with the baby's mother. In other words, he was cheating. Wendy, since then, they have gotten back together, and he's still messing around with the other girl. I told my friend to kick him out, and her kids are grown, and she makes good money, so she doesn't need him anymore, but she won't listen. Wendy, how can I get my friend, get through to my friend and convince her to leave this bastard? Stay out of grown people's business. Stay the hell. Make a life of your own. You know what I'm saying? The best friend you could be is one who's not a budinski. Stay, you know, if your friend asks you, then maybe you, if you don't hear, I have a question. Before a statement, then don't. You, and I, it's hard for all of us. It's hard for all of us. My sister, my big sister, here she comes creeping back into the damn show. <laughs> She's the, you know, she really taught me that. Wendy, if... It's not a question. I'm not giving an answer. I'm like, oh, that's good. But most importantly, what I always say here on the show is stay out of grown people's business. It's none of your business, dear lonely heart. So more, so worried about your friend that you probably have no life of your own. You are, will be the one. You're in your 30s now. You will be the 80-year-old woman at the window looking at everybody's business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get your own life. Don't worry about your friends. Oh, stop looking at the radio like that. I have my own life. This is what I do for a living. For now. This is where I hyperventilate and it's time to go home. Oh, okay. No, but you know, I'm, I'm just saying. This is what I do on the radio. I'm the furthest thing from a gossip in real life. And I definitely know how to stay out of grown people's business. To my friends, I am like the most secretive one. The best friend that you could probably ever have opposite of what I am on the radio. Scandal and mayhem. I love it all. <laughs> Alas, it's time for me to change hats. Good friend. It's time for me to go home and leave all this gossip. Where? Right here. Mm-hmm. You can keep that where? Right Put that here. Where? Back there. Right. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow at 2 o'clock. It's the Wendy Williams Experience every weekday from 2 to 7 on your radio station. Wake up tomorrow morning with the Paul Mooney Morning Show. It's p.m. in the a.m. And Vaughn Harper's up next on 107.5. I love you for continuing to listen to WBLS. Bye-bye. The Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh man. And WBLS music starts next.